I don't know about you all, but 2021 has been a long year, and a lot has happened for both the channel and myself over this year. For the channel, we crossed the 1,000 subscriber mark, more than doubled the total number of views for the channel, and concluded the long-running journey of Manchester football in Football Tactics and Glory. I also played quite a few games, many of them have been featured on the channel already, but I thought I would go through all of them now, those that have been featured and those that haven't. I had to reach back in my memory for some of these because it certainly doesn't feel like I played some of these less than a year ago. At the end though, I'm excited to say I will be announcing my game of the year along with honorable mentions akin to my subscriber special when I did that for every year from 2010 to 2020. Stay tuned for that, and my later 2022 preview video, and thank you for all of your support this past year. Let's get started with the games I played for the first time in 2021. Ori and the Will of the Wisps Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a perfect sequel. Blind Forest was already a good game, but Will of the Wisps took everything Blind Forest did and gave us more. Deeper systems, more challenges, and more to do. It's bigger, it's better, and it is absolutely gorgeous. An excellent game to start off the year with. Crusader Kings 3 Honestly, Crusader Kings 3 is also an excellent sequel to an already good game. The Grand Strategy Historical Simulator has even deeper systems that encourage playing to your character's personality and keeps the political machinations and even more possible succession crises that seem to only be solved by baby murder. Or, you know, disinheriting them, but where's the fun in that? Another excellent game that I hope to get back to someday. Ickenfell Ickenfell in its story and characters was a breath of fresh air, especially with regards to representation. While the gameplay systems and the setting are typical, there's a reason those were reused, because they're fun and interesting, and Ickenfell still brought a unique energy to the genre. If you're looking for an LGBT plus friendly witch slash wizard school game, you've come to the right game. Haven the sci-fi couple RPG game is very cute with the interactions between the two main characters, but I ended up not finishing it because of some issues with how smooth the game ran, which directly affected the timing RPG aspects of combat, so it was just not a good time for me. Looks nice, but wasn't for me. East 7 while E7 has been overshadowed by the later party system games, it truly is a solid game. The music is one of my favorite soundtracks in the series, the story and characters I think are underrated, and the party system strengths are here, just not as polished as they would get in later entries. E8 my new favorite East game does so much extremely well. The exploration is welcome, the storytelling really picks up over the course of the game, the combat is excellent, and the setting is exciting. The game's linchpin though for me is Donna and her story. I mean, you probably already knew that if you saw my video on her, but the game she's attached to is also pretty good. Dwarf Romantic Still in early access, but Dwarf Romantic is a solid, relaxing puzzle game that only gets better with each update. The creative mode edition in particular gives a whole new dynamic to the game, although it's still fun to see how you improve your high score in the regular mode too. It is an excellent relaxation game. Hexseed Ever played Minesweeper? Well this is Minesweeper, but with hexagons, and as we all know, hexagons are the bestagons. It is available for free with hundreds of levels already. You can't get a better deal, and even if you run out, there are more levels you can buy if you're feeling up to it. A simple game that does what it wants to do really well. Persona 5 Strikers the first big release for 2021 for me. It's great fun to sink back into this world and get reacquainted with the characters. Love the Phantom Thieves and their interactions, and the complexity this game offers in its story for both the Phantom Thieves and their opponents. Couple that with a really well-blended mashup of Musou and Persona combat, and this is an excellent action JRPG and Persona spin-off in one. Skies of Arcadia I finally got around to Skies of Arcadia, and oh boy does this game still hold up extremely well. Please Sega, for the love of all the moons, give this game a life on PC and modern consoles. The story is excellent, the setting an excellent blend of swashbuckling and dungeon adventure, and even the art style still looks good. In the meantime, if you can emulate it, do it. Crosscode 
Another game I've been wanting to get around to for a while. Crosscode is a single player tribute to MMORPGs and surprised me a lot with how good its story is. The game world is filled with charm and the dungeons filled with puzzles that will confound you at times and reward you with immense satisfaction upon victory. I may or may not be working on something regarding this game, so keep an eye out for a video in the future. Pyre Supergiant just makes great games. And while Pyre is more niche than the runaway success Hades, this game speaks to me. If you had told me someone made a modified basketball sports game with visual novel elements in a fantastical dystopian environment, I wouldn't have believed you. But that is what Pyre is, and it's better than anyone would expect. Scarlet Nexus Took a little while during the pre-release hype for me to get into the idea of Scarlet Nexus, but I'm really glad I did. The powers-based combat used to go up against a litany of strong enemies with their blend of organic and mechanical parts is a core element of a wonderful game and a wonderful world. The game is very conscious of its world building and has made a world I hope we get the chance to come back to. There are certainly janky areas of the game, but the heart of the game is fantastic and I had a great time with the characters and gameplay. East 9 East 9 is the party system at its peak. While story-wise I don't enjoy it as much as 8, that is a high bar to clear, there are still plenty of charming characters populating Balduk. The exploration takes on an even greater focus with the new abilities allowing three-dimensional traversal and the combat is so smooth and fun to play with. Every area of East 9 is at least good if not great, and it remains a memorable ride with a lot of potential to build on for the series moving forward. Wildermyth I love games that connect me to the characters and allow me to build my own stories, and that's basically the entire point of Wildermyth. It plays like a D&D session with lots of excellent details thrown in and the possibility of recurring characters. The pre-written stories are great, but so are all the relationships you can build just through the gameplay itself. Wildermyth is another game with strong replayability, and you best believe I'll be doing just that. Dreamscaper I guess Dreamscaper is my roguelite of the year, and as I said in my video on it, the game came at the perfect time. As you explore Cassidy's psyche and the feelings of loss and unfamiliarity living in a new place, I felt a strong connection to her. The game also embraces iterating on a basic rule set for combat that varies up runs significantly, but doesn't overcomplicate the combat, and the atmosphere for the game is excellent. Tales of Arise one of my most anticipated games in a long time finally came and succeeded spectacularly in several areas. First off, the game is gorgeous. Anytime they let us admire the vistas in-game, you best believe I'd be admiring them. And the combat is such a joy to play, especially during mid-game. The only thing holding this game back is an occasional frustrating, inconsistent story and exploration of story themes. The characters, though, were generally good, which helped ease that annoyance. Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair It's more Danganronpa, and to me, that was a good time to have. The way Danganronpa 2 played off of the first game really worked for me given my appreciation of meta humor, and the game itself for the most part retained the good elements of the first game and introduced some new ones too. Danganronpa has never blown me away with its games, but I really do grow to care for these characters and I look forward to eventually getting to the third game. East vs Trails in the Sky Alternative Saga the Geofront localization for the fighting crossover game came, and I gave it a try. Despite issues running it on my computer, it was a good time playing through the campaign and seeing these Trails in East characters interact. Once I'd done that though, there wasn't much for me to do since I wasn't into the multiplayer, but still glad I gave it a try. Maybe in the future, Falcom can come back and make another fighting game. Subnautica Subnautica is undoubtedly a good game, intense survival and base construction and all that. But I got it via the free games for the PS4 in the summer, and I think Subnautica suffers on console. Most of the time I played it, I was thinking how much more I'd enjoy it on PC, but I guess that's just how I am as a player. Maybe one day I'll get it for PC to give it a proper try. Fuga Melodies of Steel I had kept an eye on this one until I finally got the chance to review it, and I'm glad I kept it on my radar. The cute animals hide a surprisingly mature story emulating World War II France, and the adventures in the Tyrannus taking on tanks and airships produced some intense moments of strategy that I felt I was missing from other 2021 games. Fuga is not an earth-shattering game, but it is undoubtedly a fun one. 
Shin Megami Tensei 5. For my first proper Shin Megami Tensei game, I am duly impressed. I doubt my video on it has come out yet, given the limited time left in the year, but my quick notes here. The game is challenging, but in a fun way. The exploration is surprisingly engrossing, and the setting and world drew me in. Sure, the story is very basic, but SMT5 left a great impression on me, and I think it could be a stepping stone for the series moving forward. War Tales Another early access game that holds promise. Shiro Games made the excellent North Guard, and so I have faith they can make this game into a solid game as well. At the moment, it is a fun open-world RPG where you control a band of mercenaries. Most of the issues I have with it are UI-related, and once those are fixed and content is expanded, I'm ready to give it another try. And that's all the games I've played in 2021 as of now. I might get started on another just before New Year, but if I do, it'll just be saved for next year's list, and that would be Dragon Quest XI S as the winner of the recent vote on the channel. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for my 2021 Game of the Year and Honorable Mentions. We'll start with the Honorable Mentions, and let me tell you, these were hard choices. This year had a lot of really good games that stopped short of being excellent, and honestly, I could have had five Honorable Mentions here, but I set the rules to only two, and I'm sticking to it. Honorable Mention number one goes to... Wildermyth. It really caters to one of my greatest senses of joy in a video game. The gameplay informs the story of the game and vice versa. It fits together so seamlessly, and even if individual elements of other games surpass Wildermyth's systems, I don't get the same joy from those elements as I do the intricacies of Wildermyth's. Honorable mention number two goes to Shin Megami Tensei V. Another surprise for me as an honorable mention because this is the first proper SMT game I've ever played. The setting of the Divine War drew me in, but it was the challenging gameplay, the atmosphere of the areas, and the exploration that kept me coming back. I just wanted to do more side quests and make the adventure go on longer, and that's a sign that a game has truly hooked you. Which takes me to the Com Rio 2021 Game of the Year, which is East Nine Monstrum Knox. The greater emphasis on exploration, the details Falcom included to make Balduk feel like a lively location, the references to the previous East games, the characters, the excellent combat, it goes on and on. East 9 possesses so many positive elements, there was no game that managed to top it this year for sheer consistency of fun. All this makes me look forward to East 10, Falcom, even though you're not doing it next year, even though it's the 35th anniversary and it would be the perfect opportunity to take a break from trails and I hope you enjoyed the video. The like if you did, and let me know in the comments what you played in 2021 and what your game of the year was. Tune in next week for my 2022 preview video where I talk about what I'm looking forward to playing next year, and I'll see you all in the new year. Have a great day, and happy gaming.